OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Hi, everyone. Welcome. We have so many friends and family members from different states. We're super excited to have you online today. We're so happy that we were can provide you this webinar, this part one webinar of a three part series on CK12 and some of the partnerships and um, resources that we've been able to work with CK12 on. I am not your presenter for today. <laughs> your presenters are Debbie Jensen and Lindsay Kincaid. Debbie Jensen is a subject matter expert for OTAN and she has uh, devoted a lot of time and effort uh, to make sure that this project is successful um, and really believes in, the, in what CK12 has to offer for adult learners. Lindsay Kincaid is uh, one of our favorite people and our support people at CK12 who's making things happen. And you'll see once we dive into the subject a little bit more that we at our adult learners, our adult educators have a dedicated page and a dedicated home on the CK12 website. So we're very excited. Again, Melinda has introduced um, my, me for you. I'm Netta Anasari and I'm a, one of the project coordinators at OTAN. And we're so excited to be presenting for you today. Before I go into the next slide, I do want to tell you a little bit about OTAN because we do have a few friends that are um, visiting us from other states. Can you still see my screen, Melinda? Can you answer that for me, please? Yes, we can. OTAN okay. website. Okay, perfect. So OTAN.us is one of three state leadership projects for California. One half of our house does the programming and development for the California Department of Education. The other half of the house does the training and professional development for adult educators throughout the state. So we offer anything from Google trainings to Microsoft trainings to um, digital assessments to smart goals and more. You can always see our activities on the very um, uh, beginning of our page here where it says upcoming OTAN activities. We have COVID-19 field support um, resources. Um, we, we, have, we offer online courses for our California educators. And you can see a little bit more about our training, our resources, how to stay connected with us, and you can join OTAN. This is not a presentation about OTAN, but just to kind of give you an idea that um, we are dedicated to finding the best resources for our adult um, teachers in our state. Um, but luckily, we partnered with CK12, who is um, providing resources for everybody internationally. So um, we partnered up and we are giving you this presentation today on CK12. So let's go back to that presentation. I just wanted to give you a brief overview of OTAN. Everything on OTAN.us is free, by the way. So if you're outside of California and you wanna access any of our resources, you can do that. So all you gotta do is type in OTAN.us. Now, back to our presentation, CK12.AdultEd. So a couple of years ago, I met our friends at CK12 at a Go Open Summit. And so people that attend the Go Open Summit are advocates of open educational resources, right? So free resources, but quality, quality free resources that we can find for our learners. And we found value, um, especially for our adult students that are seeking basic education, secondary education that are subject specific. I can talk about econ, chemistry, world history, et cetera. And then those for high school equivalency in social studies and sciences. Um, now that's not what's limited at, on CK12, um, by the way. You can find additional resources that can support your English language learners. You can find additional uh, resources that can assist your career tech um, students. And we're, we're building on that, we're developing on that. But, um, you know, what you'll find today is mainly resources to support your, your basic ed and your secondary ed students. And so um, it was a partnership that, that was needed for our state, and we knew that it was needed for our nation and internationally to support adult learners. So um, CK12 listened and supported us and partnered with us to not create a page on OTAN site because we really want to have it open for every adult educator out there um, and said, hey, let's do this. And 
as of March of 2021, we have a home on the CK12 website and we even have our own URL. So it's ck12.org slash adult ed. And we are gonna be talking about this a little bit throughout our presentation, but let's move on to the objectives of today's session. So I've talked to you a little bit about the partnership between CK12 and OTAN. We'll get an overview of CK12. Lindsay is going to be talking to us. Um, we'll do a live session for everybody, and that will kind of kick it off. You know, you'll get to see it live and you'll see the, the lesson. But then we'll show you a little bit more about how to find resources. We'll, we'll dive a little bit deeper into resources, some assistance that's available for teachers, students, um, and then what's so special about our page. At the end, we'll be able to go back live into CK12, answer any of your questions, and also kind of get a, a good kind of overview of it live. Now, this is a part one of a three-part series. So you do not, if you signed up for today, be sure to sign up for part two and part three, because today is the overview. We'll dive deeper into how to create your Flexbooks and create those resources, and so you can have it for your own in part two. And then part three, we'll do some advanced features and then be able to reveal kind of what you guys have been working on. So this is, um, we're, we're hoping that you can join us for part one, two, and three. All right, that's enough from me. I know you're waiting for Lindsay Kincaid. Lindsay, take it away and tell us a little bit more about the CK12 Foundation. Absolutely. Um, thank you for that. And as you were just saying, this is a three-part series. I, I do want to let you know that you can kind of enter at any time. So if you have some colleagues who are not able to make it today, but they're going to maybe catch up on the recording, anybody can join us for part two. Anybody can join us for part three. So um, we, we encourage you to spread the word as we're, as we're doing this. Um, but like Netta said, I'm, I'm Lindsay from the CK12 Foundation. I've worked there for about six years now. Um, we are a nonprofit based out of Palo Alto, California. California, and everything we do is for free. Um, if you go to our site, you're not going to see any advertising. You're not going to hit a paywall. Um, this isn't some special we did um, this past year because of COVID. Um, we were, were founded to give people access around the world to the best materials. And so that's what we've done. Um, we are not the household name that maybe we would want to be. Um, some of you may be just hearing about CK12 for the first time, but we have huge numbers who we serve. Um, again, students and, and educators all around the world are coming to our site either for independent study or to um, access our materials to use with their students or even to create materials to use our platform to um, use their other open resources and like build a flex book. Um, so I'm gonna be checking out the Q&A window um, while Debbie's gonna be doing some presentation here in a little bit. So please start, start asking any of your CK12 questions and I'll be sure to address them live or type answers to them. Um, but a couple of things off the front or off the top, um, if you wanna go ahead and flip the slide. Um, like Netta said, um, you know, sometimes when you learn that something is free, uh, it's like, oh no, well, why is it free? So I just want to let you guys know that while we are free, we're still the highest quality content. CK12 has been around since 2007, um, which in the ed tech space is like dinosaur year. I mean, that's like forever, right? A, a long time. We're here to stay in the space. Um, so you can use us with confidence. Um, our resources have been developed by uh, people with PhDs, uh, domain experts, even some partnerships with like NASA. Um, so our, our, our quality content is there. And then our foundation works really hard to make sure that all of the resources are accessible across all devices. So we're going to work on um, whether it's a MacBook or a PC, we're going to work on your iPhone, your Android, your tablet, your uh, iPad. We're going to work across all of those devices. I know that's really important for um, adult learners. And then also we do have our books. If you customize them, you are able to download them into a PDF. You're going to use some, you're going to lose some of the great act interactivity that we're going to talk about today. Um, you know, the ability to do the videos and, 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 you know, the interactive simulations, but sometimes you just need a static copy for accessibility reasons. And so we're able to give that to you so you can um, work with your students offline if you need to as well. So I think um, I, I find it helpful to go live right now and like show you what a Flexbook is because here in a minute, I'm going to pass it off to Debbie and she's going to do a really great job of like talking you through the different parts of a Flexbook and again, how it taps in specifically to our adult learners. 
Um, but before we start, you know, throwing all this jargon of, of uh, plicks and, <laughs> and simulations and flex books, uh, I find it helpful to just show you what we're talking about here. So let me really quickly, um, I'm going to show you a science lesson and then I'm going to show you a little bit of a math lesson. Um, and so here we are, we are, I've just thrown you into the middle of our physics for high school diploma book. And this is a lesson on sound waves, but this is a pretty typical CK 12 lesson as far as how this is built and how this looks. We usually open up with an image, um, some sort of attention getting questions or, or prompt at the beginning. And then you're going to see that throughout this lesson, we have images and charts. And then we have these interactives that, you know, make these books, the interactive books that we've built. Um, so this is going to be a simulation, which I'll launch here in just a minute, but it's why does a violin sound different from a guitar? Um, that's a very good question. Uh, how do we tune a pan flute? That's another simulation. So the lesson is built around um, a lot of summary information, you know, on that concept. We've got videos that either CK12 has created Sorry. or have been curated um, by our team. And then you'll see summary questions and review questions um, to help to help the learners as well. Um, all of our lessons, again, this is this is kind of what a, a, a typical lesson looks like. Um, all of our lessons should have an adaptive practice attached to it. Um, all of the CK12 math and science resources, that is, some of our other books, um, like in the areas of social studies, we'll talk a little bit more about them later of why they don't have the adaptive practice. But the math, and, the math and science books are going to have adaptive practice where the goal is for students to get 10 correct. And this is really awesome because it's going to adapt to each learner's needs. And so if they are getting the answer uh, correct, it's going to give them a positive message and they're you know, now one out of 10. Um, and then if I get the answer incorrect, I not only have the opportunity to give it a second try, but I can also come over here to our friend in the corner who we call Flexi. And he is kind of the brains to our site now. We're able to talk to him and he's able to offer us hints. Um, but he could give me a quick refresh around sound waves if I needed, if I needed help. Um, so I missed it twice. So now I'm, 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 I'm still at my one for 10 and my skill level is in the beginning level um, until I progress further um, since I missed that question, I'm going to stay at kind of an easy medium level, but if I were uh, getting questions right one after the other, then I would be a more advanced student who's being served up medium and hard questions. Uh, but the goal for all students is to get 10 questions correct. So that adaptive practice, that's a, that's a really um, important feature of our lessons that you see down here in the bottom right hand corner. Uh, I do want to show you what a, one of our simulations looks like, and you'll notice that this launches just right from um, right from the lesson. And they open up with these uh, these questions that often people put on the you know put on the board or in the Zoom room, and you could start your discussion with your students like this. You could put them in breakout rooms and have them talk about it. Uh, but there's going to be a little video that I'm going to just bypass here for the sake of time. Um, but then you're taken into a sandbox environment. This is where students like test out their hypothesis. Well, what happens if I'm looking at this string and this harmonic number? What if, what if the string tension is like this? And they'll actually be able to hear it and um, again, manipulate the different graphs. We have worksheets for these. We have extensions um, when the students are finished with the simulations. Now that they know about the violin, you know, how can I make a wine glass sing? How, how is a frequency spectrum created? So our simulations are just this whole environment. We have about 120 of them labeled um, physics and chemistry, but I've seen them used at all levels. I was in a sixth grade classroom where they were using our rocket launcher one, and it was really awesome. Um, so know that these are embedded and just right here in the lesson as part of um, part of the learning experience, part of that interactivity. Uh, let me jump over here to a math lesson real quick. And again, I'm just trying to give you a little taste of what these lessons look like, and then we'll dive into um, how to assign, how to view student progress, all that good stuff. But I just want to, you know, have a, have a picture painted in your head of what this looks like. Um, this is a lesson from our Interactive Mathematics for Adult Basic Education book. Uh, it's on unit conversion. And our math lessons um, sometimes are a little bit different because they have what we call inline questions here, 
where students are going to try it based on the, um, the directions here. And so this one's a speedometer. So we're learning about the speedometer. And then they're able to answer questions right here. And I got that one right. Um, I'm going to, I'm guessing, get this run wrong. But what's cool is that when you miss it, um, it still gives you some feedback on why you missed it. So it's really important, I think, for, for all students and learners to get that instantaneous feedback. And we're really working on that at CK12 to, um, to help coach them when a teacher isn't just standing nearby that they can do learning on their own. So you're going to see some um, questions like that. And then you're going to see our clicks. Um, when we talk about clicks, we're talking about a play, learn, interactive explore. There's about 1,200 of them. There is something that you are doing over here in the playground. Um, this one looks like I'm playing with ice cream. That's kind of cool. Um, so I would be dragging something here um, and then answering some questions related to this activity. And we have, like I said, 1,200 of these across all the different branches. So if you are um, looking for that perfect five-minute warm-up or, you know, you've got five minutes left in class, what's the review? Um, or just an activity that's a little different from your regular lesson that gets people excited, um, I highly recommend the Plix. Um, Debbie, I think that's all I want to show them right now because I'm going to come back on at the end. And like I said, I'm going to take you through the toolbar and the insights and talk about assigning and LMS integration and all of that. Um, but first, we just want to get you really used to what the actual offering is and how it best relates to um, the needs of the adult learners. Thanks. Let's move on to the next slide. This one. Um, what do you want as a teacher? The most that you could ever dream of would be to reach the needs of every single student. And in the reality, you're just, that doesn't happen. You kind of aim for the most and hope for the best and try and help tutoring who you can, but inevitably somebody slips through the cracks. And that's the thing that's so wonderful about CK12. Because it's a digital textbook that everyone has available, their needs can be met individually. And you as a teacher, you are told what they're doing and what's not happening and what is happening. And so it's the best of all worlds for the student and for you. Next slide. Now, when we talk about search and Lindsay will do this live, there's two things that you're going to be seeing. There's two places you can go across the top. You've got the dashboard, you've got the library and that's where when you select something, some resource, they put all of the resources that you select in your library. So you can always go back and find it. Um, subjects, that's another place where you're going to be able to search and also explore. Um, then where I've got the numbers, when I got, when I, I was, the original search that I did was for mathematics for my ABE class and I needed some math help with fractions. And so I chose those things. And when I came back the next time, they had more things to recommend for me. So recommendations are there and that's at one. Two, these are standards, for, so they, they're, you can um, search by standards. You can search by concept maps, or you can use the search up where the number four is, and that's where you could just type in what you're searching for. Next slide. This is search by subject, and you can see that there's lots of subjects, um, especially, okay, I will talk a lot about ABE, and this works for high-level ESL as well. We need the language at a lower level. We need the math at a lower level. And so what you can see here is the math at the various levels. And you can see the things. And that is very helpful for being able to address your needs for the students that you're teaching. Um, you can also see that adult education now has its site. So we are there. Um, we just started in March. Um, and so we have, we're just beginning. And we have basic education, so ABE, we have the high school diploma, and we have the high school equivalency. Now, our dream <laughs> is ESL. And this isn't just our dream, it's CK-12's dream too, because they know that worldwide, there are many people that need help with their reading. They need help with their writing. And so this is a dream. We need partners, we need you. And so you ESL teachers, you um, teachers of all the classes, um, as you create, please share so that we can all build together because that's where this all got started 
is with teachers that were needing some help, needing some work, and they were adult teachers, and they took the CK-12 materials or even some of their own and put those in for us to be able to use. So that's the exciting part that we have there for us. Um, next slide. And Debbie, I was just going to uh -huh. say, to to add to that ESL, I mean, we're getting a couple of ESL interests. And so you could see here that there are definitely um, resources, even if they haven't made it over to the adult education site or page, rather, you could still see that there are options for English um, enhancements with spelling and writing. So, I mean, even if it wasn't necessarily located in the page, Lindsay will kind of, when she shows us live, will be able to kind of show us where some of those other resources, really, you can build your own so so don't yet just think oh it's not for esl oh no it's not for career tech ed that's not true right because it's very powerful where you can create your own kind of what um what debbie just told you so i'll move on to the next slide this is the what is available they have the flat and these are all links and so when you click on any of these you're going to be able to go and find more and browse them they have their flex books their original flex books were wonderful their flex books 2.0 uh, integrated and made everything whole made everything work together so that as you saw with lindsay uh, they're powerful um, you have the adaptive practice you have simulations you have the clicks i always like to point people out with the study guides because even though that seems like that's kind of low tech even the study guides are wonderful because the students can write on them. They can highlight them and so that they can um, access them and use them. And they were created by students. So it's not the teacher telling them what they should know, but it's the students saying, this is what I need to know. And so they were really great. You also can find schools in your area if you're looking and saying, well, does anybody around me, do they even know about CK-12? What are they doing? And they have that as well. Next slide. This is your simulations, and it's just to kind of let you see the variety that they have. Um, and this is one slide. There's there's so many more, but they're cool topics. Even if I'm not, you know, in in doing physics, knowing about what a driverless car is, or the scientific measurements, or metric units, unit conversions, rockets, acceleration, or on the prom night when you're looking in the mirror. How does a mirror work? These are the kinds of things that they have in the simulations. Next slide. These are the plicks. And again, these are just two random choice slides of them. There's many, many more. But I wanted to see, show you that you could use this as an introductory kind of to your lesson or something that you want them to learn or to get enjoyment from. These were math ones and they were order of operation, combining integers, simple interest, rounding, equivalent fractions, or in the science, um, natural selection ecosystems, the water cycle, chemical reactions, pH. Um, when your students asks some question in class, and it's maybe not on particularly on topic, you can see if there's a plix for it, and then you could bring it back and super wow them, it would be great. Next slide. These are the study guides, and I just wanted you to see. Um, I'm a writer. In fact, people laugh at me because I even take notes everywhere I go. I, it's just me. And so the study guides were very, very appealing to me to give me that extra help that I needed. And so this is just to give you an idea of what they look like. Next slide. They call it discover actionable insights. But what it means is that they're paying attention to what your students are doing. They're paying attention to the ones they skip, the ones they get right, the ones they don't get right, um, the ones that they had to get hints for or they had to get a, a higher level or lower level question all of those are the actionable insights and they give these to you as a teacher and then it's not just like you got to read charts they make suggestions for things you can try so it's it's magnificent for helping you as a teacher next slide now they will create an automatic grading and reporting for you. So that if you do um, create a classroom in CK-12, these things are available to you there. But let's say 
next slide, that you already have an LMS like Google Classroom or Canvas or Schoology. They will link to that and send the grades and everything to yours. And so you don't have to have two places that you need to go to. So that's very, very helpful. Next slide. Now we're going to go over to the adult education web pages. And so this is what you're going to see. And we are proud of what's here, but knowing how big adult education is, we hope that someday there will be huge numbers of courses here. So this is our beginning. There are four math courses. The reason there's four is that they're slightly different. If you've worked with your students with math, you know that there's different steps, there's different um, sequences that work best, and maybe it works best for you as a teacher. And so they may all be the similar material, but they're presented slightly different. So take a look at each one, see which one resonates with you. Next slide. These are the high school uh, diploma courses on the left and the high school equivalency on the right. Um, US history, US government, economics, um, biology, chemistry, physics, um, pre-algebra for high school diploma and algebra one for high school diploma. Um, and then under the equivalency, um, you've got foundational math, algebra books, uh, excuse me, algebra basics, um, geometry, data statistics and probability. If you're teaching high school equivalency, you're recognizing these titles because they're directly from the things that are in those um, equivalency courses. You've got algebra for high school equivalency. And then we, we tried to glean everything CK had, CK-12 had for um, our adult learners in the equivalency program. And so there were teachers who were teaching high school equivalency and these are the things they made. And so you may find one that you like better or another one. Um, I particularly was, thrilled with the science um, for high school equivalency because high school uh, science, are we talking physics, chemistry? Uh, these things are huge, but to pass the exam, you don't need to know everything, but there are certain specific topics you do need, do need to know. And so we applaud our teachers that have gone through and spent the time to figure out what they need and what CK-12 has to be able to meet the needs for our adult students. And so these things are here, please take a look. Next slide. Going along with our, our, our teachers, one of our teachers created an introduction for how to use CK-12. And it's to the adults in, in their class. And so it, it's right there. Um, and you have access to that and you can use that as well. And that just makes it so much friendlier. Our adults often struggle to get back to school. And now they're into a new medium and it's online and they don't really know how to use it. And they have their questions and this is here for them. So it makes it so that they can feel comfortable and that they can do the work and be successful. Next slide. If we continue on through the uh, adult ed web pages, they're then going to ask you, are you an educator or are you a student? And then they take you down two different pathways. Um, let's go to the next slide and see what the pathway for an educator would be. Here, they want you to get started and they're gonna hold your hand the whole way. Um, they'll show you how to create a class. They'll show you how to find your flex book, the thing you're looking for. And they'll show you how to assign students. And all of these are linked so that there's more information for you on all of these topics. Next slide. Continuing with the um, website, the web pages for adult ed. Um, not everybody's interested in a flex book. You may be pretty happy with what you have, but you want some more resources. And that's what this is. This is taking you directly to the adaptive practice or the plicks or the simulations, so you can choose from them as well. Next slide. Then there's a deeper dive. Strategies for using CK-12, the flexlets. Now those are super cool. Don't miss those. Um, these were designed right at the beginning of, the, of COVID 
And they were for teachers that, you know, we, we lost that last quarter. And now you wonder what's going to happen when you come back in the fall. Are the students going to know what they need to know? And so the FlexWix were de designed to meet those needs, to help students review. And so they're, they're wonderful. They're wonderful short and, and great. So take a look at those. They also teach you how to customize FlexBooks and adaptive practice and how to get started with your LMS. Let's keep going. Next slide. Now, she mentioned Flexi. I showed my grandson Flexi and he said it looked like a chiclet and that he was a great friend. And that's what I think your students will find. Um, one of the testimonials, and we'll look at some of those in a couple minutes, but one of them, the big po point she wanted to make, she was a science teacher and she'd used a CK-12 for several years. And she said her students loved them because it empowers the students to be able to go on without you, that they don't have to wait until you answer their question or until there's a discussion about it, it's there for them. So Flexi helps provide immediate feedback, answer the questions, provide interactive examples, asks the students questions, gives them hints, offers recommendations, provides reminders, even asks reflection questions for them, which is super cool. Next slide. Now, we had some people asking about the standards. And at the bottom, you'll see that where it says, how does CK-12 align with the career and college readiness standards? And you will see that the uh, math standards have been aligned. Um, we're hoping for other alignments. This one was done by one of the people that used CK-12 and they made those alignments. And so we will share as those of our people that work with CK-12, as they share with us, we will share that with everyone. Let's go to the next slide. There are over, there's hundreds of testimonials and I went through them all. And they're all wonderful because everyone has a different insight as to why CK-12 meets the needs of their students and their classroom and their schools. Um, these were just some of my favorites. And so we have the one who is the director of his school and he wanted his students to investigate and experience lessons to be able to go at their own pace and design their own learning. Another, um, she was very funny. She's a, the one on the top row. And she said that one of the students um, was giving the typical complaint, teacher, I didn't have my computer. And another student that was sitting on the other side said, hey, dude, just use your phone. And, and that's the wonder of this. It works on all devices and it works well on all devices. So that means they have the ability to work on their, their uh, materials and their resources, their schoolwork from anywhere at any time. And that's marvelous. Uh, we had teachers who were excited because they were frustrated in the sciences and the social studies because the world changes so quickly that your textbook is outdated the minute it's printed. And they wanted to be able to talk about what happened in January, or they wanted to talk about the latest in science. You can do that with CK-12. The customization is so readily available that you can add these things that are happening right now. That's a lot of power for you. It's a living document. Um, another teacher noticed that or noted that um, she loved the fact that she didn't have to take all of her materials home, that they were there. She could put them in her CK-12 um, flexbook and all her own materials could be there. And so it made her life so much easier, um, right at her fingertips. Um, we also had a science teacher that was saying how much um, the changes that happened in the, the science world and how they, they love the simulations and the, the things that were there and available for them too. Um, one teacher, he wanted to, this is the one on the bottom in the middle, he wanted to be able to offer his students lots of dynamic activities. And so it wasn't the flex books for him. It was being able to go in, type in a topic and find it. And that there were things that he could then enliven his class and excite his students. The last lady though will ring a bell with adult ed teachers. She had a parent come who was all apologetic because he couldn't help his child with their homework. And 
because his English wasn't very good. And she said that she emphasized to him that CK-12 is available in, Amer the, excuse me, it's available in over 90 languages. And so that you can meet the needs of your students, even if they're speaking a different language. I think we're ready to go to the next slide. And on the next slide, it's posing to you the question, if you could engage every single student anywhere, anytime, on any device, and it was free, what would you imagine? And now we'll turn it over to Lindsay and she'll show you. Yay. <laughs> All right, so hopefully you guys are getting excited about what you're seeing. Um, Debbie, I've left a few questions in the Q&A for you to, um, as kind of the, the book creator of the OTAN CK12 books, um, to let you um, respond to some of those. Um, and then there was just a reminder posted, remember to use the, the, the Q&A window if you would like. I put in a lot of links to the chat as we were talking, um, but what we're gonna try to accomplish here in the next uh, 15, 20 minutes is I'm gonna give you a tour of CK12. I showed you a lesson, but I wanna show you um, what is available right now for like grab and go, um, setting up an account, uh, using just searching for our clicks or our simulations. And remember that part two of this webinar is all about customizing. So we want you to leave today kind of eyeing maybe a series of books that you think you want to adapt for your learners or, you know, seeing what's possible on CK12. And then um, maybe you want to create your own book from scratch or use some resources of ours and some resources of yours. We're going to kind of set you up for that today. And then next week, that's really what we're doing the deep dive into. Okay, so keep the questions coming in. Um, I'm going to share my screen and hopefully tap into a lot of what you guys are wanting to see. Um, let me share here. And I'm going to turn off my camera because you guys don't want like the awkward profile on presenting view. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn that off. And here we go. So I am on the CK12 homepage. And while everything is completely free on CK12, you do want to set up an account at some point. Um, that's just so we can, you know, help you keep track of the, the resources that you're using or creating, make recommendations, all that kind of thing. So I'm logged into a demo account right now, um, but if you have not signed in or signed up, you're able to do that. We've got a few single sign-on options for you. And then if you are a teacher, you're able to designate yourself as a teacher. And, um, and our, we get the question a lot of like, how are the teacher and student versions different? And to be honest with you, they're not entirely different. You can see that here I'm in teacher view it's asking me what I want to teach today, and it kind of serves up some products here and, you know, some of the things we showed you on slides. And if I go over to the student version, they really just have a different view. They have access to most of the resources that our teachers do because this is set up for um, learners around the world, you know, whether they're in a classroom setting or not. Um, so it looks a little bit different. We give them different pathways to access their learning, um, but they, they in general have access to the same content um, that our teachers do. And we, we definitely hit flexi harder with the students because that's um, who they're using to talk to and, and help them on their personalized learning journey. Um, but I'm going to go back to the teacher view, assuming that most of you on this webinar are probably educators looking to use these resources with your learners. And um, so this is, like I said, the, the basic page of, I told you that we are pretty heavy in the math and science subjects of CK-12. We kind of started with middle school and high school math and science. And then we've branched out from there. We created some college books. Um, we have some translated content. We have um, countries that are adopting us, like the country of Georgia is using our flex books to educate their whole country, um, you know, books for Chile and Brazil. Um, and then a smattering of like English content and then social studies content. And you're going to see this little icon next to our social studies content saying that this has been created by users on the CK12 platform. And this is something really cool that I want to highlight is that we have CK12 content but then there's this whole other partition of the site where users like yourselves are able to create or adapt materials 
and then post them so other users can use them and, sh and share with them. And I've got a great example of that here in just a minute. Um, but this is the adult education area. So if you're interested, um, I'm gonna click on one of these and it's gonna take me to this adult education page. It's also that um, the, the ck12.org slash adult education is the, or adult edu is the shortcut if you need it. And this is the page we've been referring to in the PowerPoint um, with these books. And like Debbie said, we are just getting started. We just launched these books. So there's a lot more that we hope to do with these books to further customize them for adult educators. Of course, we would love to round this out with some other subjects as well, and then definitely venture into the areas of ELL and CTE. Um, but we're working on our partnerships and other authors to kind of help us build out that content. So we're hoping to at least get you excited about the potential with these books. And then we wanna to continue to have those conversations with you about other books that we should be creating. Um, I'm gonna jump back out to the main page real quick because hopefully you're excited about an adult ed book, but maybe, maybe you already have a book you're using and you are just intrigued by these different CK12 resources that you're seeing. And you might wanna access them individually outside the book environment. So if I press the CK12 logo, I'm able to go back out to the home page. And the menu option that I find the most useful up here, I really like this explore menu option. And this is where you can go directly into the resource that you're looking for. So we were talking about study guides earlier. If you wanna see our study guides offerings, we've got a quick link for that. Um, if you wanted to see all of our physics and chemistry simulations, and again, broad topics that can be used at all ages and levels, um, you're able to go there. If you wanted to, to view all 1,200 of our clicks across all the different branches um, from that Explore menu, you can access it. And here you have all of the different, um, different branches that you could be using, or you could be searching here for a certain concept. And you can see that all of these are tagged to different concepts. Um, so I just, I, I think that going again, back out to the homepage, this explore menu option, this is gonna get you pretty quickly to what you're looking for. Um, I'm not sure CCSS and NGSS interests too many of you, but that information is there. And then um, we do have a certified educator program. That's kind of how we came to know uh, Netta and Debbie, they're both CK12 certified educators. So if you are wanting to go even deeper than what we're gonna be covering in these webinars, there's a self-paced, totally free online course that you're able to go through and come out of it with that um, badge of distinction that you're a certified educator. Um, lots of other resources here too, and then Flexbooks. Okay, so I want to show um, you that you can come up here to the search bar. Um, we, we earlier kind of dived into a book based on the subject, but you can also come up here and search for anything. So, um, well, I can't see my chat window. I'd ask somebody to type in something or in the chat window. Um, let's go to, uh, what's the lesson I like? Continental divide. I feel like that's one I've seen in a lot of classrooms being used. Um, when you search for anything, you can search for a big concept or a micro concept. You're going to get a lot of search results. But what I'm wanting to show you here is that there are two tabs that, <laughs> that you want to access. One that says CK12 content and one that says community contributed content. So we've got 4,461 results for Continental Divide and CK12 World. And you can use the, um, the filters over here on the left to narrow down for what you're looking for. Now you're seeing that this just is going by standard grades. Honestly, we don't, we don't really believe in grades so much at CK12. We really are just concept-based, wanting to reach the learner wherever they are. And since we are international, what's often taught in the US at a certain grade level is dramatically different from say what's taught in India. Um, so I would kind of ignore this grade filter anyway. But if you know you're looking for a video or you're looking for a real world example or adaptive practice or a Plix, you could just search for an individual concept and narrow it down here. And you could access that, you could share a link, you could assign it with your, to your students. Um, but I told you we didn't really have any great language um, arts books. If I search for something like language arts, um, it's gonna pull up our, our common sense composition book, which is a good start. But if I come over here to this community contributed tab, 
I'm now going to see books that our users have created either in full or that they've adapted some of the CK12 content um, and uploaded it to the site and created and you know curated their own books. So you can see that who this was created by. This is a third grade language arts book, a language arts companion, um, fifth grade language arts book. So the point that I'm trying to make is that even if CK12 doesn't have the perfect book just neatly labeled for you, I really encourage you to search by subject or by individual topics in the search bar and then flip from the CK12 content tab to the community contributed tab and open up some of these resources and see if you like them. Um, because all of these resources can be added to other books. Um, you can combine books. Again, you can take your open resources and um, pull them into some CK12 books. So that's, that's the key to the search there. Um, really recommend you using that. Um, I'm gonna go back out to the homepage again. So if you want to access any of these individually, know that you can, and these are all assignable through a learning management system or through a CK12 class. Um, the whole magic to the Flexbook 2.0, um, our newest Flexbook, is that we have, I'm going to go back to the adult page here, we have taken all of those elements and we have put them together in the interactive Flexbook. So before we used to have our PLIC separate from our simulation, separate from the adaptive practice. But as I showed you earlier, we've now brought them all together in our lessons in a way that makes, um, you know, students going through the book really exciting. So I'm gonna come down here. Um, this is great actually, because we have somebody on this webinar who I've never met in person, but Shanna, Shanna Friend, she is the author, the main author of the Science for High School Equivalency book. Um, in fact, she probably had a different title on it when it was her book, but I believe she took a lot of the CK12 content and started to make it work for her adult learners. And then when Debbie was using that community contributed tab to search for content that was available, she stumbled across these awesome books. And she's like, Lindsay, I love these books. Um, and uh, she, uh, Debbie's like, I, I, I need to use these. I love the videos that she's created at the beginning of the chapters, like let's, let's work with this. So, um, so Shanna, I, I'm blind to the chat window right now, but um, I don't know if you wanted to tell anybody some context for like how you've created these books or what your process was. I know we're getting, we're looking forward to like learning more about you and talking to you um, later on this week about these books. But um, you always get the author information here. You get chapters, you get details of the books. Um, but again, let me just go into a, a section of this book. Um, I'm going to go into work and mechanics. Uh, there's a lesson on levers here that I like. Just to show you, again, I'm in the book. I'm in, I'm in that um, science for high school equivalency book. I've put, dropped into um, a section in chapter 16. And then you can see that immediately we serve up other ways to learn. And this is that idea on CK12, we want learners to learn their own way. And some do that through those simulations, those clicks or those videos or that real world application. So these are all ways to engage your learners even before they start a lesson or after they're into the lesson. Or if you have those students who are like, I'm finished early, what else can I do? Or, hey, I'm still not understanding that concept. Do you have anything else that could try to teach it to me? That's this other ways to learn here. But then you start and you get in a lesson. And I showed you earlier how you were able to access videos and simulations and clicks here in the lesson, and that there's adaptive practice down on the bottom as well. <clears throat> a few additional things I want to show you is that there is a toolbar, and we do a great job hiding it. Um, so make a mental note that your little toolbar is up here, these nine boxes. And this is where you're going to find your menu options to, to do a lot more things, um, both as a teacher and as a as a student. OK, we've got some learning tools where you can view some insights um, that related content is what was on that learn more page. You can see that there's been some highlighting happening over here um, just because it's digital doesn't mean that students can't make some highlights and some notes that's going to be on their um, show up in their individual account, like right here, where you can see that I've highlighted four random things over time here. But students can still highlight and take notes. 
you as an instructor can add additional resources if you want to add in um, you know something else for the lesson a pdf a jpeg a powerpoint um, you're able to upload that right into the lesson here and then you can do all kinds of things with this you can assign it if you want some feedback on how the students did you can just share it um, you could take this url up at the top and just email it out or post it you know in and if you've got a website and you just say, hey, for to start class today, we're all going to do look at this lesson. Um, you can just grab the URL and share it if you want. Um, again, if you want to know analytics on how the student did and how the student interacted with this page, you're definitely going to want to use the assign button. Um, and then the topic that we're going to get into next week is like, OK, well, I like this lesson, but um, I really say you don't enjoy this video. It looks cool. So nothing, nothing against this guy. Um, but you can press the customize button. Um, it's not liking me do this because it says that I've already customized this and it's already in my library and it's, it's having to think extra hard. Um, but if you press customize for the first time, um, you're able to give it a title and then you can come in here and you can change anything you want in this lesson so you can post a picture of, of, of a lever in your house um, i could get rid of a video um, i could change this clicks i can change the text so we're going to show you how to make those changes in your book next week and that's an individual lesson but you're also able to really the the real magic to it is at the book level you know, you're not bound to these, uh, this, is, this has a lot of chapters, it has 33 chapters. You're not bound to those 33 chapters. You can at any time you want edit this book and it basically makes a copy of CK12's book, which again, um, Shanna made her book based on a CK12 book. And then Debbie took Shanna's book and made the adult learner book. And now I am making this so I could put my name at the end of this. Of this is my version of the high school equivalency book that lives in my library. But safe in my school, you know, we're not going to get to uh, we're not going to get to beyond the solar system. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove that chapter. And then uh, we're not going to do earthquakes. Uh, I'm here actually in Kansas City. We don't we don't do the earthquakes, but uh, or volcanoes. But I want to add in a chapter on. Um, tornadoes. I don't see one on tornadoes right now. So I can add in my own chapter on tornadoes. Um, I can add in a lesson that I've made in class as long as again, it, it, it meets our license, which is generally an open license that you just you can't take like a Pearson worksheet that's copyrighted and put it into the book. Um, but things that you've created things that are open source, you can add that in add new chapters, add new lessons. And then within any of these, um, within any of these sections, you can also do the same thing. You can rearrange. I'm going to do cell theory first. We're not going to get to cell division. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that. And within a few minutes here, you could have a book that matches your scope and sequence. And the best part is, is that it's always, um, it's always editable. It's a, it's a living book. So you can, you can dive in whenever you would like um, and create your own book. So I think that's again a little preview of, of, of what's going to be covered in more detail. Um, again, it's not liking since I have this edit thing. Um, what we're going to cover in more detail next week. But what I want you guys to do is I want you to explore CK12 a little bit, which again, using this explore menu is a great way to do it. See, see what the deal is with our simulations and our flicks and look at flex books look at schools near you who are already using our resources, check out the study guides, um, dive into some different content, search for some subjects or concepts that are immediately relevant to you. And then also, you know, of course, since hopefully, hopefully these books are great starter books for you that you're interested in, um, maybe this only gets you 60% or 70% of the way there. You know, you say, hey, I, I like this pre-algebra book, but you know, I need to add a few more chapters to it, or I need to do some rearranging. Um, we're going to dive into that really thoroughly next week on how to customize these books, or even how to start with just a blank CK12 shell to curate your own content. Uh, I'm trying to think, let's, Debbie, how are we doing on the questions? I'm trying to think of what else I need to show them. I guess I didn't show the language that's important too. Sorry, let me show you, let me show you a couple more things. 
Um, I see the question in the Q&A about the audio text. Um, CK12 doesn't have an audio component to it, but we are optimized for Chrome. And so any of your Chrome extensions that have that speech to text or text to speech um, ability is gonna work with CK12. So just other third parties are doing it better than we would. So we, we use our resources elsewhere. Um, and then we're partners with Google and Google helps us do the Google Translate. And so you can instantly change into other languages. Um, it's not gonna be perfect because it's, it's Google Translate, but you know, I would imagine a lot of you have um, learners who speak different languages that you just, you don't have any resources for and how nice that they can instantly change um, you know, Samoan, they can instantly change the language where they can get the, um, the text and the menu options in a language that uh, works for them. So that's huge. And then one more kind of preview here is that if you have assigned this lesson to your students, if you've assigned it either through Google Classroom or Canvas or Schoology, or if you don't have one of those LMSs, you've used our CK12 class, you're gonna be able to get insights. And this is just gonna show you a little demo of what insights look like. But if I had assigned this lesson to all my students, I would get a scatter plot of how my students performed. And I would be able to select a student and see how much time they spent on the lesson, what their skill level was with this practice, and then their engagement, were they, were they highlighting anything? Were they watching any videos? Were they clicking on those clicks? Um, so you start to get analytics that a just a, a straight up score wouldn't show you, um, that you get really a broader picture of, of what is the student doing? You know, only three minutes and 24 seconds on this read. You know, Molly Brown, like her engagement was low, three minutes. Um, surely somebody here spent longer than three. Oh, nine seconds. Yeah, um, just beginning. So you have a lot of insight into what's going on with your students if you want to do a deep dive into it. Um, but you also can just do a regular heat map and get scores passed back through Google and Canvas and Schoology if you would rather do it that way. Um, let me let me stop there for a minute and uh, we turn my video back on and say hi to everybody. And again, like what I'm showing you, that's a it's a very quick overview. And so what I'm challenging you to do is to um, figure out which parts of the CK12 platform interest you and how you're gonna be able to maximize these free resources for your learners and your, um, and your context, okay? And then the next two weeks, we're gonna build on what you've seen today, a really drill down into um, the customization aspect. And then since I, I only kind of touched on the learning management systems, we'll talk more about assignments, I think, um, coming up in a, in a way that'll make more sense to you once you've spent some time exploring the site. Um, so Debbie, talk to me here. How are we doing? What else do people need to see? Um, there were some questions. How many students can you have? Endless, endless students. Um, yeah, you, you can have as many students as you want. Um, if you are already in a situation where you're using Google Classroom or Canvas or Schoology, we recommend you just going in through those applications and using the classes as you've been using them. Um, if you do not, if you're like, hey, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm a lone individual or my situation is different. I don't have access to any of those learning management systems. That's great. We have a CK12 class for you. And I think it taps out maybe at like 500 students in one class where you might have to build like class A, class B. Um, but basically, basically endless. You can have as many students as you want. Again, everything's free. There's no charge or anything for, for student um, or anything like that. What is a heat map? <laughs> Let me share my screen again. Um, these are good questions of a heat map. So I'm showing you, these are our insights, right? Um, where say I assigned this lesson, this writing equations with variables. I wanted to see how my students did. I'd click on this little lightning thing and I would be able to, um, again, I'm gonna look at demo data here. Um, look at my demo class. 
But uh, let me show you what a report looks like um, for CK12 and Google Classroom and um, Canvas and Schoology. Of, it's going to look the same as a CK12 class report. So just bear with me here while I go into a CK12 class. Um, I'm going to go into winter 2020. This is a class that we set up with some of our interns, I believe. And I can see the assignments, um, I can add students, I can do all this in CK12, um, but the reports is the part that you're asking about. And this is a heat map. So it's, it's color coded with that green and red and orange. So at a glance, you can tell how your students are doing here. So none of these students did these assignments, that's fine. But let's see, uh, it looks like uh, this is me apparently. So I got 88% on this quiz that I did. And you can click on it and you can learn all about my progress on this quiz. So if I got seven of eight correct, uh, it took me 45 seconds and you can see exactly what I missed. Um, which again, all these analytics are huge as you're trying to figure out what's going on with your students. Um, this little clock says this student did this, but it was two days and 17 hours late past the deadline when I set up for the due date for this assignment. Um, you can, uh, let's see, the practice um, that I did look at earlier. Let's see how Carl did on his practice. Um, he got his 10 correct and then even a couple more correct. He spent four minutes on it and you can see the breakdown of his adaptive practice questions. So he did two easy questions and then quickly started advancing to the medium and hard questions. And again, I could scroll down and see exactly what he was answering. So um, I just, I think of this again, I was, I was a classroom teacher and I was in a, you know, a, public school with with six classes and 30 kids in each class one of those uh, so I didn't always have time to like give every student their 20 minutes of analyzing their progress so this is your like at a glance you know quick check in how are the students doing and these grades would be passed through canvas and schoology and google classroom if you were using those um, but know that when you do have a conference with 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 bob um, you can sit down and you can say, Bob, let's look at all your work. And you can drill down into any of this and be like, you know, I think you're you're struggling with this skill because here I could see this. Or, you know, you only spent 30 seconds on the lesson. Um, there's, there's lots of analytics to help support you in any of those kind of individual deep dives or for you folks who, you know, are working with IEPs or, um, you know, special needs, things like that. Of, of we're, we're giving you the full breadth here of opportunities to check student progress. We have another question. Yes. I've used adaptive practice with a few students and it's worked very well. I fussed with trying <laughs> to create my own quizzes, but without success. Will that be covered in one of the next two sessions? I'm gonna show you right now. Um, I'm gonna go back out, always pressing this logo, going back out to the homepage. Um, so the question is, is I showed you our adaptive practice where it's set up for kids to try to get 10 correct, or sorry, adult learners, anybody trying to get 10 correct. And it's going to advance easy, medium, and hard, depending on how they're doing. But some people want more control than that. Um, they want to just make what we call in, in CK12 land a quiz, although that could be review, homework, independent practice. You know, quiz is kind of a trigger word that I wish we would change. Um, when you're in your library, this is a tab we haven't really explored. This is where the things that you create or the things that you add to your library are going to be stored. And you've got a create new button here. And so one of the things that you can create is that quiz that I'm talking about. Um, by the way, this is also where you would start creating one of your books from scratch if you wanted to. Um, but that's, that, that's next week for sure. Um, but creating a quiz allows you more control again. So it's not gonna be adaptive, but you're able to access our question sets if you want. So you can give it a title. Um, this is gonna be a really fancy title. Um, I can give it a description and then you have control over, do you want them to you know, have unlimited attempts because it's homework or practice, you know, uh, independent study, or do you want it, oh no, this is a quiz. They have one attempt, they're gonna do it in 20 minutes and I'm not gonna show any hints and I'm gonna shuffle the questions. Um, you've got all of these different controls over how you wanna present the quiz. And then what's nice is that we have opened up our question bank to you. So all of those adaptive practice questions that the students are able to do, you can also search for a concept up here and um, find questions. Okay, I'm gonna look at these 19 gravity questions for physical science. 
And so it just pulled those into my quiz I'm creating, but I can go in and, oh, it doesn't, it doesn't like my, sorry. It doesn't like that I put the slash in there. Let's see if it'll, if it'll, should take hyphens, I think, okay. Um, if I come in here and add, oh man, 20 minutes. You know, I'm going too quickly in my demo that the system's like, slow down. Um, these are the questions, the 19 questions that we have available for gravity in our database. And I can choose which ones of these I wanna have in my quiz. So I can select these, um, I can sort by difficulty. Say I, you know, I didn't think the hard questions were very, um, I didn't wanna do any of the hard questions. So I could deselect the hard questions and say, you know, let's do more of the easy and medium questions. Um, or you can sort by type of, maybe I don't want any true false questions. And then again, you can open these up and preview any of the questions at any time. And you can also add in your own questions um, using our question editor. But when I save this, it's gonna have changed where it's not gonna show 19 questions anymore. It's gonna say that my quiz so far is of 13 questions. And I can continue to add question sets as, as much as I want. So I can, you know, I can go in and say, hey, let's do some on, you know, you can drill down, you can see, let's, let's steal some of these chemical bond questions and do the same thing and start building a quiz that way. And then once you've built your quiz, you're able to save it and it is going to be in your library where all the stuff that you make goes. And so here is that quiz that I just made that at any point I can access it and I can assign it to my students. I can download it as a PDF, um, lots of things I can do. So I would just come in here, if I'm using Google Classroom, I would link it to my Google Classroom and my students would be doing 33 questions, one attempt, 20 minutes. It's probably not the best settings for that. So I, I usually do unlimited and, you know, like show hints or I'm a little more favorable on my quizzes, but you can control all of those details and assign it to your students. I'm hoping we have that another question. Oh, 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 sorry. No, no, no. Yeah. Hit me we with have more another questions. question. Can you yep. integrate with GeoGebra? You know, we have integrated with GeoGebra. If you, you probably saw that with our math content. Um, anything with an embed code can be pulled into our books. Uh, let me go out to subjects here. Uh, probably like our, our, um, our adult books, I'm sure have some GeoGebra in them as well, but I'm just diving into something. Um, our, our team has been working with GeoGebra to create these interactives um, in-house. But I believe if you are a GeoGebra user, this should be an embed code that we've got when you edit the lesson, we've got a place for embed codes and that can be a video, that can be an image, um, that could be like I've heard of things like Quizlet, you know, some of those other subscription type things you might use. Um, anything with an embed code that you slap in there should show up on the screen. Uh, next question was, uh, I see topics for forensic science, community, community contributions, but I thought that I saw a Flexbook textbook on forensic science. Probably. Um, so coming back out to our homepage here, remember that we've, we've kind of gotten the start of the adult ed things on the adult ed page, which is just our start. But you might want to come out here into the broader world of all of our content and find other Flexbooks. Um, so this is on forensic science, forensics, you are going to give me something tough, the former English teacher that I'm, I'm trying to think about it. So what I would do is I would come here to forensic science, and then I'm going to search by uh, flexbook textbooks. And it's pulling up like each time forensic science is referenced in a lot of our different um, like biology, human biology books. So now I would have to drill down a little bit more into this, but you're right. If I go over to community contributed, Big Sandy, um, Lorraine has created a forensic science book. And probably if you got in here, you would be able to see what she used as the primary um, source for the book. Um, that wasn't the best explanation for your question, but I, I would encourage you to um, like, uh, that's actually the wrong example too. Um, if I come over here to like geometry and I browse by subject, we have a lot of flex books that CK12 has created. And we've, we've kind of put a lot of them on the shelves while we're doing the 
interactive, the latest, greatest, everything unified together. So when I just went to geometry, you're going to see that you have filtering options here to see different languages, the different grades. You can see which ones are 2.0 and which ones have been community contributed. So you've got choice here. And so here's a um, Pythagorean theorem book. It's not a Flexbook 2.0. It's not one we're, we're showing on the adult page, but you may want to pull pieces of this into you know, your adult ed books. Um, same thing with a lot of these other books. Um, here's geometry in Spanish. Um, you can customize this book or steal chapters from it. Uh, lots of options um, are CBS eBooks done in partnership. Um, so use our Flexbook browser to find things well beyond um, what looks like we have in that, in that um, what do you want to teach today option or on our adult page right now. We have a couple more questions. Yep. Is there integration with Desmos, a math graphing program? Uh, I don't know much about, I, I, yeah, I, I'm not sure how you want to integrate of, again, um, all I can really speak to is that if there's some sort of embed code where you can take something going on on Desmos and embed it into one of our flex books, it'll work. Otherwise we don't have any like set partnership. Our only partnerships are with Google, Schoology, um, Canvas, and a little bit with um, like Clever and ClassLink and a few of those um, sign-on systems. What is the highest level, highest reading level in the English lessons? Ah, uh, yeah, that's a tricky one. Um, I, my, as a, again, a former English teacher, my hope and desire is that sometime we kind of get Lexile scores or we're able to, to better speak to um, the vocabulary and what reading level you can expect. But like I said, since we are a concept-based um, organization, um, it, it just depends. So I would like, you know, for English specifically, this is our common sense composition book, where if I wanted to see who wrote it, I can tell that this was San Jose State University. And I could go into these lessons and I could start looking at it. But we, we unfortunately aren't really able to tell you a whole lot about the reading level. This would be, all right, well, this was a college level book. Um, you know, let me let me see what's going on here. Um, some of our flex books we have basic at grade and advanced is what we call it for our middle and high school content where the basic has been pared down a little bit. The at grade is what the typical student studying that concept at, at their grade would be able to do. And then advanced um, usually has some higher level thinking and some um, elevated language to it. Uh, but that's that, that's a great question and something I'm hoping that we're going to like, you know, pay special attention to as we're building out these adult books. We have two more questions. Okay. Uh, do you have GED previous solved question papers for math in CK-12? Uh, I do not believe so. I, I'm wondering if I fully understand that question, Debbie. I don't know if you understand it better better than I do. But um, but again, we, we had those the GED books that we, we adapted from um, Shanna our community contributor. Um, I, 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 that, do they have papers? What do you make of that, Debbie? Well, in the one textbook, they do have a pre-test that you can give the students to find out what they need to study in the book. And that is in one of the, the books for the um, high school equivalency. Um, the others, it's the CK-12, the materials that, that are there. So that would be my answer. I'm not sure that's the best. The next question says, uh can we connect with moodle we have a ton of users who use ck12 with moodle we don't have that like grade pass back where they don't talk to each other in the same way that that we do with with google and um, google classroom and school g and canvas but if you're talking about you know grabbing a link of our resources and putting it into your moodle you know feed or board or whatever they call that um you know, you can grab the URLs and you can and you can use them as much as you want. It's just it's 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 not quite as slick with that with that progress feedback. And the last one that's here says, I noticed there were college lessons. Will CK12 have GRE lessons or any material similar to that? Uh, maybe. I mean, we're as a as a foundation I, i'm going to check and see if there's anything labeled gre for community contributed oh it's going to pull up everything with greatest let me go to like flexbook textbook oh yeah gretna um uh gre is probably a tough thing to search for but um 
no is the immediate answer of I don't think we are actively working on that. Of Again, I'm excited that um, after years of kind of middle and high school math and science that we are venturing off into the adult ed space. And that has started again with like CK-12's core content of math and science. But we want to build out from there. But I'm guessing we'll move toward CTE and ELL or, you know, language arts books to go um, for these adult learners before we would go after like our GRE students. That's kind of a different ballgame. But you're always welcome to create a book on our site. <laughs> Any other questions, anyone? We have answered all the questions that were in the Q&A. Do we want to, I think, do you want to go back and share the screen and give them some contact information from us? Because ah. this is just the start of a conversation where, you know, we want to hear from you. We want to partner with you. Of, I would love, like, actually, Debbie and I were talking about this before this webinar. We're starting to get um, lots of emails from people saying, hey, I'm in this situation and I, I want to talk to you more about this or I want to share this with my department or can you do a demo for, you know, several of us in a building and like the answer to all that is yes, 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 yes. We want to know what your ideas are, how you're using these books, how we can make them better. If you have awesome adult content that you think is license compliant or it could come onto the CK12 site, like let's talk about it. We would love to work with you on that. Um, so the easiest address for me is partners at CK12. Um, that's, that's an address that I man, but it's, it's also visible to a lot of my other teammates. So that's cool to, to see everything that's going on. Um, and then you can see Debbie's email address there. And go ahead, Debbie. Um, yes, you're definitely welcome to contact me as well. Um, we have one more question that popped in. How is the community contributed content vetted? Is it vetted for accuracy? Um, it, by the CK12 team, we are largely hands off of these books um, of the community contributed. And that's why we've made it pretty clear that there's the CK12 tab, there's the community contributed tab. And then like our, a lot of our social studies books, for instance, were made in partnership with El Paso Independent School District in Texas. And we put that all over the description. We put that community contributed label saying that, you know, it's social studies, but it's it's this was created in Texas, so that may or may not work for everybody. Or again, um, we think it's strong enough content that we wanted to, you know, highlight it for people. Um, but you may want to be making some tweaks to that book based on it. So um, community contributed is really up to you. You're checking boxes saying that you have um, agreed to the license, that uh, that you know the content's appropriate. And then it goes onto the site, and unless it's flagged for us, um, it stays up there. And it, it's kind of up to you to look at the book and see the content. And where it gets tricky is, is I know that um, Shanna was saying, like we've we've used we've used her books as the core of a couple of our books on the adult site. And she's like, well, what if I'm still working on it? What if I'm still building it? What if I still want to make changes to it? And when you start making copies of somebody else's book you've kind of separated that process where now that book, you know, is not going to be updated by Shanna because it's a CK 12 book and it's our responsibility to update it. Um, but we'll talk more about that next week. That's, that's a great question. We'll talk more about publishing. Um, you know, not everything you do on our site is immediately available for the world to see. So you can create things in peace knowing that it's not like immediately, you know, posted for everybody. So we'll, we'll go over some of those best practices and um, talk more about our license and, um, you know, talk more about kind of the do's and don'ts and, and how to make sure something doesn't get flagged on, on the site. Lindsay, I was going to say, you know, OTN worked in partnership with CK12 to make sure that what we were grabbing from the community contributed was vetted with it, with accuracy, to check for accuracy by an adult basic educator and an adult secondary educator. So we do have folks that are looking at that before being posted onto the adult ed site or page. Yes. Yes, I think the the adult ed page again is, is is it's its own thing that's getting a lot of attention right now, a lot of eyes on it. Again, it's not it's not perfect, but we're continuing to that process. Um, but the general community contributed. I mean, we have hundreds of thousands of flex books on our site, and um, and we're just thankful when people want to post their work in case somebody else can grab it and it saves them time and helps them helps them with their learners. 
And then, um, Lindsay, I know I've given, I've asked um, someone from our participants to share their email address because they want to be um, kind of involved in, in creating more writing, reading resources as well. So we'll definitely uh, take that, notate that email address. And as we move forward with our efforts, um, make our team a little bit larger. Yeah, or if you guys, if you guys are Twitter people or LinkedIn people, again, we're we're trying to like throw a lot of things out into the world and network in any way, just to figure out who our who our folks are, who are going to be our great partners in this journey. So um, you can also find us. You know, there's there's all of OTAN's information. You've got CK12. Um, again, I'm I'm pretty easy to find. I know Ned is easy to find. Of just if you're if you're into the the social media stuff, um, connect with us connect with us there too, so we can stay updated on um, what everybody's doing. Yes, and you'll find um, we have partnered with uh, CK12 with a couple of different posts. So our, we've always tagged CK12. So if you want to find us and then find CK12 from there, you can find them at, at CK12 Foundation um, on Twitter.